Hello, and welcome to A Girl and Her Librarian. Now this is my first review, and I'm really excited to share it with you. It's about the Lizzie Grace series by Kerry Arthur. There are currently, it's the 31st of January today, there are currently six books in the series and one due out in mid to late February. I came across the series Christmas 2020 and to be honest it took me ages to get through the first book which is called Blood Kissed. Usually I can read a book in if I'm into it in about two to five days if not less but this one took me 20 days and for me this is a very long time. I just come off of a binge reread of my favourite books in the Archangel series. It's by Nalini Singh. And I'd also read a few from the Mercy Thompson world, sort of catching up. And and yes, I'll be reviewing those too, if I haven't already by the time you get here. I absolutely hated the thought of taking on something new. I don't know about you, but when I'm stressed, and Christmas can always be stressful, especially in lockdown, I want my old favourites. I want my most handsome male heroes. My angels and humans alike who are just, you know, yummy. However, I persevered and once I was through that first book, I sort of kind of read the remaining five books within, well, less than four weeks. Yeah, five books, less than four weeks, roughly. (laughs) I've just finished uh, Deadly Vows, book six, and whilst waiting for book seven to come out very, very soon, I'm about to go back and reread them as I begin to review the individual books. The Librarian channel is a wonderful excuse to reread books as if I needed one. <laughs> I'm a great rereader of my favourites. So, why did I enjoy it so much? The two central characters are witches. One main witch, Lizzie, who's also a psychic, and her witch familiar, Belle. The only known human familiar in the history of witches, apparently. And a lot of the ones I've come across in this series have been cats, including her cousin's cat who doesn't like her. Um... So Belle's also um, a spirit talker, which is very interesting. Their relationship, though, is just beautiful. They protect and adore one another. And at their heart, they're best friends. And as a girl who's had a best friend in the past, I know what that's like to have your best friend at your back. A familiar's job is to take care of her witch, and Belle just does a wonderful job of it. And she potentially kind of has a deeper understanding of what poor, poor Lizzie goes through. The thing is, the thing that really makes me laugh is the revitalising potions that Belle makes. And she maintains that the more sugar you put in it, the less they work. So they're normally foul tasting. (laughs) But being a good girl, Lizzie drinks them. And she also makes them for Belle as well sometimes. But it's, it's just really funny between the two of them. They can talk in their heads. So quite often you have a conversation going on properly and then you have them two talking about something else in their heads. So they both reside in the Phelan Werewolf Reservation and yeah, it it was that aspect that made me want to read it in the first place. I really do like a good werewolf. (laughs) So they've recently moved there and they've opened a cafe that everyone seems to agree makes the best coffee and cake ever. In fact, their coffee and cake smoothed the way to quite a lot of things actually. So now let's throw in a head ranger who's in charge of the reservation. Aiden who's a werewolf, and yummy. He's son of his pack's alpha werewolf, and of course an alpha himself, and in line to take over one day. In the beginning, isn't particularly a fan of witches, which we understand the issue with later on in the book, that kind of comes to light. But he does come around and get quite sweet on Lizzie, which is really, really cute. As the series progresses, we're introduced to Blood Witches, a vampiress who scares the hell out of me and wanders kind of in and out of the series. A spirit werewolf. There's some ghouls, winged demons, a demon who preys on newlyweds, um, a white lady, amongst a million other things, including a fire demon. That's right, fire demon. So the first few books kind of tease out the girl's background and it becomes kind of clear that they're hiding from Lizzie's past. It takes time to unfold, and I've read a few reviews who say, you know, you've strung it out a little too long, but I thought it was quite good, and I think it's worth the wait. And it's the reason why it's far easier to follow the overarching story if you kind of read them in order, at least the first time, so you know what's going on. 
The same can be said for the developing thing between Aidan and Lizzie, um, because a thorn in the side of their being together is that werewolves marry werewolves, not witches, and she's not a witch. She, she's a witch, not a werewolf. So in essence, they can't kind of their relationship can't go in it anywhere, and she's expecting it to end in heartbreak. Um, so yes, it's deliciously complicated. The reservation requires a resident witch because they've got um, a wild magic wellspring. So a temporary one is brought in. He's not quite sure about Lizzie and Belle first and he kind of senses that there's more to their story than they give him. And whilst he's soon replaced actually by a relative of Lizzie's, um, he decides to move to the area with his partner who's a retired witch. And he stays around. Um, but they all start to kind of coalesce into the main characters. You've got Monty, the uh, resident witch, and her cousin, who's very sweet on Belle, by the way, which is really funny. They went to college together. Um, and then you have, um, oh, God, what's Eli's? Um, Ashworth. You've got Ashworth and Eli, um, two gentlemen, uh, partners. Um, Eli's a retired witch, but very good. Uh, you've got Aidan, and you've got Belle and Lizzie. So you've got this kind of group of people who become the main characters. Um, and I've really come to love each one of them. Uh, they've all kind of grown on me. Here's to the downsides though. Now, firstly, you have to know that it's set in Australia, which I have nothing against, don't get me wrong, at all. But I do struggle with some of the terminology here and there and I've had to look up a few things. Nothing major, um, but with so many series kind of set in the United States, it kind of threw me a little bit of a loop. But it's not, uh, you know, there are things that they say and you think, oh, that's an odd word to use. And then you realise it's an Australianism, as I called it. Well, that's okay. There was a bit of a major issue for me in that um, I'm going to set this in the context of I've been a former career proofreader. The amount of errors in these books is very annoying. Uh, quite often um, it looks like a sentence has been changed around a few times and then a little word like he or an has been left in doubly so it comes in twice in the sentence. As I said, I know I'm sensitive to it um, and it's really irritated me and when I go back and do a reread, um, I kind of, I'm probably still going to have to read lines multiple times and that's really annoying when I'm in full flow and kind of reading my heart out. So even in a reread, I'm going to have to reread the lines that I kind of struggled with. Um, I would admit the books became a tad formulaic once you've gotten into them. But what books aren't in an established series? I mean, there's only so many things you can do with the main characters. If you start killing off major loved characters, you're going to lose your base fans. So you kind of know that even though they get maimed and they're put in deadly peril, that you're kind of not likely to get them murdered or at least not irrevocably so they are kind of um the, the, those themes running through the books is all big scary another minor big scary that may or may not be related and and they kind of run around that so it is a little formulaic but you do learn little bits about the relationships between um, Aidan and Lizzie, between Bell and Lizzie, between Ashworth and Eli. You also come to realise that the werewolves on the reservation, there's three packs and you're not allowed on pack land. You have to be invited or um, get permission to go onto pack land. And that's very important because um, it makes Lizzie realise when she is allowed to go onto pack land, just what a different world it is and also that um you know she comes into contact with Aidan's parents and his mother is particularly ice queenish which is is very interesting to, to kind of to kind of get through none of these issues i've noted killed the excitement for me i read the books voraciously and i cannot wait to sink my teeth into number seven the dialogue is hilarious and fun and pithy I mean, that kind of, it reminds me of Buffy sometimes, that kind of quick dialogue. Um, and there are times when I have laughed out loud and it makes me want to hug a teddy bear. And then there's a load of, oh, um, kind of things as well. <laughs> I do believe it is most certainly worth your time to try. And if you do try and you've got any comments, please, please, please um, say so underneath the video. I'd love to interact with everybody. 
I will be putting a link to my Goodreads underneath. I've started a brand new one for a girl and her librarian. And as I start reading through books, I'm going to put them on there and do my reviews there as well. Thank you very much for listening. I can't believe I finally got this first audio done and ready for a video on YouTube. And I love that you've come and listened. Take very good care of yourselves. Bye-bye.